Hatfield is a great pal of mine, someone who has paid their dues like nobody else in this business, and at a later kind of stage in her career, is experiencing this phenomenal profile, initially because of her work, of course, with Sex and the City, and, and then Devil Wears Prada, and she's, she's really hot right now, one of the hottest stylists around. A little while ago, she got this amazing building. I know people were clamoring to shoot her apartment because she's got such a great imagination, and you just know that any place that she's gonna live is gonna be totally eclectic, and that real downtowny kind of artsy vibe. It's like walking into the inside of your head. I mean, obviously, this place is really emblematic of everything that you stand for and the way you see the world. The design was something that evolved. It has no real plan. Whatever it is, I just kind of do it instinctively. I think you can be extremely creative when you have a, a simple base and then you start doing your mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Her uh, publicist said to me a few months ago, Jeannie, you know, Pat's got this incredible place that everybody's been dying to you know to shoot it and do something on it, but she said that she would only do it if it was you. Like she would do it for you, she would do it for your magazine. And I thought, wow, that's a nice offer. So I thought, great, let's put her in the issue. After leaving Pat's, I hopped a jet back to Toronto where the whole team was finally reunited for the main fashion shoot. For this, the main fashion shoot this time it was again we're looking at the theme of the future. Well, I thought high tech ski wear would be a great statement about future because it, it employs, uh, first of all, the uh, highest kinds of technological fabrications, and it's just that whole feeling of the streamline that I wanted to really um, play with uh, in the fashion story. We brainstormed with the team that we assemble, you know, the photographer, the stylist, the hair and makeup people, generally bring them in and we all sort of work through the concept. This is my favorite. Yes. So we're doing that one with the, uh, with snow pants. Yeah, fantastic. And a pair of pants. Fantastic. This is an awesome job. They're all in the same color palette and they all still fit the story. I didn't think that that was going to be as easily achieved so, as it was. Right. Beautiful. Hi. Hi, I'm Jeannie. Well, nice to meet you. Audrey. Hi, Audrey. I'm really thrilled you're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to it. It's crossing behind a helmet right now, guys. The bell. Yeah. We're shooting with David Howe, who is a new photographer for us, which is uh, great. Paul called me and said we're doing a ski theme shoot, um, very much like a Chanel ski theme. I think we have that. I mean, we love to work with the standard guys and girls, but we always try to mix it up. Throw somebody new into the mix with an established group, and that way you just get a whole new vibe. You always wonder what you're getting into when you work with a new photographer. That's why I was just thinking the same thing, that we should, maybe we should put that other leg on the hair more. back a little more. Okay. Um, no, the other your right leg. Yeah. Your right leg back. Almost a sprinting yeah. with um, ski being a sport. I wanted the girl to move and um, show the texture of clothing through movement. I, I think that it was a, probably just a misinterpretation that it was a motion story. We never wanted it to be that because of the sports angle. He assumed that we wanted sort of movement and whatever. I was told that we want to go for the more static. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, so. Which, in a way, was a bit of a relief for me as well because I have worked with Audrey before and I was known her as a very elegant, um, mature, a little bit on the um, you know, sort of dark, sophisticated side. And I wanted to show that side of her. And, and I think it's easier to work with the static poses with her. This is really nice. I mean, again, great in there. I like to work in the team environment, so I like the fact that I'm always getting feedbacks from the art director. Stay like that, second. The styling is fantastic. I love texture, and everything about the shoot is texture. Yeah, that's hot. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. Thank you. How's it going? That's what we have so far. What are you doing? Do you want to see it? We decided to jump in. No. Exaggerated expression. Good. That's good. Nice. Sure. But that looks great. Yeah. What a strong face. 
Awesome. Great. Awesome. The shoot was nicely wrapped up, but over at Atelier, chaos ruled as things were far from finished. Back at the office, all that remained was to put the issue together, but that would prove to be the toughest part of all. It's difficult when you've got too much of a good thing. We had two great covers, two really strong covers. This is definitely the shot where she looks the best because she was happiest in this dress, but I'm not sure if it really works for the issue. When they were shooting it, I knew that it was going to be the best photograph from the lot because she was so comfortable and she loved it so much more than anything else. So that's how that whole um, debate began. Two great shots, one that was more reflective of the theme of the issue, which was future, and the other that was more reflective of the season, which was holiday. It's been a huge debate over the last 48 hours. We've got two covers yeah. today's, today's today. They're both ready to go. We just yeah. have to decide which one we want. I could tell you that everyone flip-flopped, everyone. It was like split half and half. There were two camps. There were those that were right and those were, that were wrong. So. <laughs> to me, it looks a little bit too much like Harper's Bazaar in 1968. It is so not what I had in mind, I have to tell you. Well, it's not future. I don't think the image of the future one was as strong of, of the essence of the girl. I actually like the Dior metallic shot the best. By 8 o'clock in the morning, everyone said it was this one. By 4 o'clock, everyone said it was the other one. And by 5 o'clock, everyone's half people said this and half people said that. And it was real pressure. We were late and it was holding everything up. But Belle and I were like, whatever, it's beautiful. Both of them are beautiful. Just let us know so we can get it done. Hmm. And Sheila Tarleton, our publisher, had a lot of strong ideas about this that were very valid. You know, she was coming at it from more of a commercial point of view, which is incredibly valid. Hey, that's what it's about. We want to, you know, sell the magazine and we want to please sponsors. The challenge that I have is to step back from all of that and try and objectively um, make a decision as to ultimately where it's going to come down. So after lots of deliberation and, you know, beating people up, we decided to, you know, go with the more festive look, the feathers. It works, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It, it, it looks sort of holiday-ish, Christmassy. And then we chose cut lines that played with the future. We decided to go with future takes flight because the feathers, you know, all of a sudden make sense. But it probably is a more compelling image when it comes right down to it. And it will sell. It will be a cover mm -hmm. that will sell. My mission is to make sure that not only does the magazine succeed, but that the careers of all those that, that work yeah. here continue to grow. And that means making smart business decisions every day. Well, you see, now this is, this was the other picture from right. the cover, but it looks okay in there. It looks great. C'est la vie. In the end, it all came together. The holiday issue one of our strongest yet. Oh yeah, there's one last thing on Michael's plate. The impending dinner party for Sandra Bullock and Sigourney Weaver, who are due to arrive in mere minutes. It's down to the last, you know, the last couple of minutes, and I think Sheila was in there spray wiping down tables as people were coming in, so it was, uh, it was down to the wire. The team came through, finishing the final details just in time for the arrival of the first limo. It was a great night. Sigourney and uh, Sandra Bullock came by, had dinner. It was lovely. Beautiful. A fun night. A really fun night. Thank you. Thank you. What are these little guys? Those are Naughty Monkeys. Oh, I would wear them just because they're called Naughty Monkeys. I must go there immediately to get these. Oh, that is sad. Oh, oh a sad. Very cool. Can I buy these right off after the shoot? Well, now that I'll do them, they'll just have to get them to be wholesale. I have to have them. That's, like the, that's what this business drives you to. They're $120. Okay, I'll take six. Stories.